We will set up this simple payment flow. It starts when someone clicks on a button on your website, then they will land on this checkout page where they can pay with most popular payment methods, including PayPal and Apple Pay. And then they will be redirected to another page to download this digital asset. To do all of this, we will use a payment provider called Stripe. It's probably one of the most popular payment providers in the world, but what many don't know, they also offer a checkout page. <laughs> Hello internet people, my name is Robert and I'm here to help you with your website and online business. So to get started, let's just head to stripe.com. So this is stripe.com and as mentioned, it's a very popular payment provider and you don't pay anything except if you use it. So if, with every transaction, there's different fees and it depends on your country and also depends uh, where the user is and what, what type of payment they use. So for example, credit cards have a slightly different pricing than for example, PayPal. In any case, just go to their homepage and click on sign in to create an account. So once you have an account, you should see something like this. We need to go to payments and inside payments, we have payment links. You can see that I have a few already active, but we're just going to create a new one here at the top. Okay. So you already see the preview here. And first of all, we need to select the type of product. Is it a, a product or subscription, just subscription, uh, or a customer chooses what to pay. In my case, it's a product. So I'm going to choose that. And in this case, I need to select the uh, product. So from here, you don't have any other one, but I can add a new product here. So let me add a name. Then you can add description and the image of the product or the service. In my case, it's service. So I'm going to use an image of myself. There you go. The image is there. Next, you need to add the type of product you're selling because of the tax code, I guess. It's just a few popular ones or you have the physical and services here. In my case, it's just service. So I'm going to click on service. Then you can set the tax. So use currency to determine if the tax is included or excluded. This is probably the most popular way because in some countries you include the VAT and in some you don't. You could also set that manually though. Then let's give this a price. And I can add more currencies here. So for example, if I want to add in dollars, then it would automatically add here. But let's say this is a weird price to have. So I'm going to just change it to something a bit more round in that sense. So this would be the cost in US dollars. And then we, you can add more currencies if you want to. This is something that the customers can then select. And here, do you want to basically charge people one time or recurring? So in my case is one time, it's a service, one time service. And if you want to see the accurate preview with the tax, then you need to activate the tax registration. And we're going to do that in a second, but let's just finish with this product. So let's add this product. You can always update this later if you need to. There you go. Oh, okay. I misspelled it, but uh, it should be data audit. Let's change that quickly like this. And then from here, you have a few options, collect tax automatically, collect customers addresses, require customers to provide a phone number and so on. Check what applies to you. And I'm going to select that I go and collect tax automatically just because it saves me a lot of time. But if you are okay with uh, doing all the taxes, then you can uncheck this. Now, in case you see that the collect tax automatically is disabled, don't worry, we're going to set up the taxes in a second. I just see it already because I already done that before. So we're going to come back to that and you can enable it later. Now to collect a customer's address and the phone number, I would advise not to do it unless you really need it. If obviously if you have a physical product or you need those uh, details, then take it. But the more you ask, the more, the harder it will be convert because people will be like, well, why do I need to provide my phone number? It just creates fiction that you don't need. So if you don't need that information, don't ask for it. And then the last option is to add the custom fields. And these will just help you if you need to set up some extra stuff. If you want to have first name, if you want to have some things like that, that besides email address, do you need any other information that can be later used for your CRM? So customer relationship management, and things like that. So you could set it up from here, but let's say you want to add a uh, first name like this, and you can see it would appear right after the email address for this tutorial. I'm not going to ask for that. So I'm just going to disable this. 
You also have a few advanced options here. So for example, if you want to allow promotion codes, which I do want to, I want to give some promotions for certain people. And then I want to allow businesses to provide their tax ID because yeah, that way they, in some countries you can get the VAT back and then you can save payment details for future use. So if a customer comes many times to you, then you could enable this. Mine is mostly one-time payments. And then you can select what the text here says. So it says pay now. I'm going to say book because they're actually booking my service. The preview looks great. And I can also preview it on mobile like this. And it looks nice. Now, this is obviously our, uh, just a checkout page. So there's not that much you can do. And you could also add another product here if you want to. And then the customer can uh, select if they want bro both products or just one. But this is a specific landing page for this product. So I advise actually having one product per checkout because that makes it much easier unless you want to upsell some stuff. That's, uh, that's up to you. And one more thing before we create this uh, page, let's click on after payment. And then here, this is basically what the customers see after they pay. So you can uh, show a confirmation page. So in this case, it shows this one. You can also replace default custom message and type in yourself. Thanks for the purchase. You can add also more things to it. But in some cases, you want to also have don't show confirmation page, but actually redirect them to another page. So for example, what you could do if you are selling digital products, you could now redirect them to another place to grab that file. And if you need something more advanced than that, then you can use Zapier to actually automate all of this. So for example, you could use Zapier to connect Stripe and your email marketing tool. That way, anytime somebody buys from you, they will be added directly to a email list. And then you can do anything with that record. Send an email. You could send uh, an email with the product in it. It really depends what you need. Zapier connects to Stripe, but also to thousands of different uh, tools. And that way you can automate a lot of things by just connecting with Zapier. Or instead of Zapier, you can also check if your email provider is actually on Stripe App Marketplace. For example, MailChimp is here. So you're able to do that without Z Zapier. And if you don't have an email marketing tool yet, watch this tutorial where I'll show you how to create an email list and automatically send digital products to anyone who subscribes to it. And it's totally free if you have less than a thousand subscribers. In my case, I'm going to use this because once they sign up, I want to uh, send them a, a, a form to ask a few questions. So that's what's going to happen here. And the form I have here, I already have the URL here and it's this one. So I'm going to place it. So once they paid, they go to this URL and it's a form that they fill in. And then I get that into my Airtable. That's just another software, which will then send me an email and put it in like a, my database that, hey, there's now a purchase. If you opt in, you can also create an invoice in PDF, but Stripe charges 0.4% for transaction total capped at $2. So that's something up to you if you want to do. In any case, Stripe sends a re receipt. So maybe this is just an extra thing that if somebody asks, then you can uh, send this to them. But uh, it's up to you if you want to select this. Okay, now we are ready with all the settings. So we can click here on create a link. This is like your checkout overview page. So we can grab this URL. Let's grab it. I'll open incognito window and let's see how it works. You can see it comes to this page with my product in it. So now somebody could just go on and buy it. So you could take this URL now and place it in a button. So as a link. So for example, this website is built in WordPress. I created this button in Elementor. So now when you click on it, it'll take you to checkout page like this. It's not the same one, but it's similar one. So this is how you can direct people to your checkout page. So either that's from your website, social media, whatever that is, you just place it as a link and then they will come here. And look, designing and building a high converting landing page is hard. So if you need help with that, you can book me to audit your landing page and get actionable improvement points within 48 hours. Check the first link in the description for more information. Now, before we test that it all works, we actually need to set up some settings. And at the end of this video, I'll show you how to test this without actually paying money. And it will be just in like a demo mode. So let's close this one. 
So in this overview page, I want to show you a few things. If you ever need to edit here, you can just click on these three dots and edit the checkout page or change name or deactivate it. Also, you have the option of QR code. So basically, this is a QR code to your uh, checkout page. So you could share this QR code online or offline in real life, and then people scan this, they will be taken to that checkout page. Also, later on, when you start having payments, you'll see some uh, analytics and payment information here. Right now, obviously, I don't have anything. It's quite simple, but it's good that there is something. And now, if we scroll down, what we need to set here is the payment method. So if I click on manage, you're able to add more or reduce the payment uh, methods if you want to. So for example, if your most customers are in the US, then you probably don't need uh, cards from uh, France and Netherlands and Germany. You can just disable those if they're not already disabled. But in my case, I have a global audience, so I have enabled more payment methods. So if you need any of these, you can just click here on turn on, one time payments, call, request access, and it will turn it on. It's super easy to use in that sense. And at any point, if you need to turn off, just click on it. And here, turn off. So I'm going to just disable it. Now, there's so many payment methods. So you just need to research which ones you need for your global audience or for your local audience. So make sure the most popular payment methods are here. But by default, you already have cards. You also have PayPal, but you need to turn it on. In my case, I don't have it here, so I could turn it on. I would need to just log into PayPal and connect it, but it's super easy. Okay. And then from here, you can preview all the payment methods depending on the country because it uh, prioritizes certain payment methods. So you see here, if I'm in Netherlands, I would see all of these payment methods. EPS, that makes doesn't really make sense. I have to check, for example, if that's a popular payment me method somewhere else, but you have here ideal, which is very popular in, in Netherlands. So that should be actually the first option. So that's a bit of a shame that they don't show that first. In any case, that's how you set up the payment methods, right? Let's go back to payments. So we've set up the product before, but let's take a look at some settings you can do here also. So products and under products you have, you can set up coupons, shipping rates, tax rates specific to that product and pricing tables if needed. I'm going to just uh, show you how to do coupons in this tutorial. So for coupons, I have already one discount there, but if I want to add a new one, just click here on new, give it a name and you can give it an ID, but it will also add it automatically. Then you choose if it's a percentage discount or a fixed amount. Let's say uh, it's a fixed amount. I'm going to give it $20 or Euro discount. Uh, you can add additional currencies here if you want. You can even set that if it applies to certain amounts, but I don't need that. My products are all about same price. And then you can choose a duration forever, once or multiple months. And redemption limits, you can see if these two apply to you. Well, let's say I want to just have this. Only 10 customers can redeem them. After that, this discount doesn't work anymore. Cool. And then if you need to add some use customer facing coupon codes, yes, I do want to add. So let's say like this, you can add your own code and you can see there's even more options here. You can make it only eligible for first time orders. Let's do that. Limit to specific customers, but I don't have any customers, so I'm not going to limit and so on. You can uh, go through this if you want to. And you can also add another code if needed. But in any case, from here, you will create the coupon. And now if anybody use this Boo 20, then they get a 20 euro or $20 discount whenever they use it. All right, let's go back to payments and then let's go to payment links. And here, before we jump in into our checkout again, we need to update some of the custom branding. So if you click here, you can actually customize a little bit of the shop. So, so this is the branding of generic stuff. So for example, you're going to add an icon, a logo here. So I have added the logo. Then you can use uh, the brand colors. That's going to show up. You see here to check out. That's what's going to show up there. So for example, if I change it to something more red, it, that's what you're going to see. I'm going to go back to what I had. And then the accent color is buttons and stuff like that. So this is where you change it. And you can click from here and see how different parts of the website will look like. So for example, that's the customer portal, invoice payments, you see, invoice PDF, identity, and so on. And you can check it on mobile or desktop.
If you need even more customization, you can click on this button and then you can customize a little bit more. So from here, you can select the font. For example, if I want Roboto, that's going to be a bit better. Actually, I like Montserrat, so I'm going to select that one. Cool. And then shapes, you can select rounded, rectangular. So there's not that many choices here, but if you want, you can always uh, update it here. Okay, save changes. And let's go back to brand elements here. Now, one more thing that's super important are those taxes. So if we go back to product settings, you see here that we have taxes. So if we click on settings here, you can set up your tax requirements here. So I would go through this and just set it up because it will help you in the long run. It's also mandatory while selling. So you should set this up and that way it's much easier for you to later on deal with taxes once you get some um, uh, sales in. So probably at this point, you don't have yet your business information. So I would definitely enter that in if you haven't yet. And here, the options to integrate with taxes, you can enable the use of automatic tax calculation. I think it costs a little bit per transaction, but for me, it's totally worth it. Okay, let's go back to payments and payment links. Now we can test this uh, payment link. So let's click on this one and we'll go to the overview page. And now what we can do is we come here at, on the top and test mode. Let's enable that one. So right now it's in a test mode. So we can go to that page and you can see here it's in test mode. So now we can use uh, our fake cards to actually test that this whole flow works. And to do this, all we need is to go to this URL and grab the uh, test card here. So for example, for credit cards, you can test it with this credit card number. So it's just four twos and four twos. So let's try that. We can add email. So I'm gonna just add my email address here. I'm gonna pay with cards and it was four twos all the way like this. Then for this part, it is 1234. So two, three, four. And then we can use anything here and name on the card. You can just put test. Country of region, doesn't matter for the test purposes, but let's keep it to Netherlands. I'm pushing for business. From here, you could select and put your business name and the VAT number if that's needed. Not gonna do that now. Cool. And now if I click on book for $99, you can see that the page is redirecting to my uh, form. That's what I actually wanted. In my case, it's just a form, but you could also redirect to your Google Drive to download a file or anything you want. This is how you would do it. So let's go back to the payment links. And if I click on this one that we were just in, we should have now one test order. Here, payments and analytics. You can see that there should be now a payment. Now you see more than one here because I already paid uh, for my other products. So here it is, this one. Okay, cool. So once you're done with everything, you're ready. All you, you can do, just click on test mode. So disable the test mode. The test mode is off. So you actually get real money from your customers. One of the advanced features that you have here, if you go to settings from here, and if you scroll down, you have your, your business and custom domains. You're able to actually create a custom domain name instead of using a long URL that Stripe provides. So for example, for the checkout, you could use instead of checkoutstripe.com, you can add your own domain name. In that case, it will be something like this, pay.example.com. And to do this, you need to have a domain name and it also costs you $10 per month if you want to set this up. It's not necessary in the beginning, but if you want to go a bit more advanced, then it looks a bit more seamless that, that the URL has your domain name in it. Okay, you've just built this simple checkout flow, but there's something else I've started doing recently that's had even bigger impact on my digital product sales. So check out this deep dive where I'll show you what it is and how you can use it to get more sales than ever.